Hi there all my crafty friends, welcome to my channel. I'm going to transform a ceramic pot into a work of art. I'll show you how to do a layered decoupage using rice papers. Make sure you stick with me. I'm going to show you a whole new way of antiquing a crackle finish. So if you're ready, let's make a mess. I bought this windowsill plant pot at Star Nursery. I fell in love with the shape of it. I love that it's narrow enough to fit on a window cell. I'm giving it a quick sanding before I get started. I'm going to paint the outside of the pot with white gesso. Somehow I missed filming it, but I painted the inside of the pot with a great product that seals and protects with a nice waterproof barrier. It's called Painter's Touch Ultra Cover Premium Latex Paint and it's by Rust-Oleum. It's a clear gloss. I use this a lot. It has a beautiful glossy finish that you can use on anything. I'm going to be doing a very interesting gold crackle on the upper portion of this pot. I painted the top inch and a half on the inside and outside with gold. It took two coats of the gold. Metallic paints don't cover well. Sometimes they take two or three coats to get the color nice. The pot has a hole in the bottom and I don't want water dripping all over my window cell. So I plugged it up with some hot glue from the inside of the pot. I'll add some rocks in the bottom for drainage. Sorry for my sick voice guys. I had a cold about three weeks ago and I just can't get rid of the cough and the hoarse voice. I'm using Pentart's Fine Line Crackle Varnish. I'm painting all the gold areas with component number one right now. I'll let that dry for about an hour or so until it turns clear. Where are you watching from? Let me know in the comments. It's fun to see what cities and countries you're all watching from. I'm filming from Las Vegas, Nevada in the United States. Component one is dry now, so I'm adding component two. This is an amber color, so put it on in thin, even strokes. If you get buildup or drips anywhere, you'll be able to see it when it dries. That will take about two to three hours to dry. Once dry, you'll be able to see all the cracks. I'm using a heat gun for a couple of minutes to get more and deeper cracks. From here on, you can only use solvent-based products on top of the crackle. Anything water-based will ruin your crackle finish. Now for a little fun. I bought this set of little oil paints from Hobby Lobby. Oil paint is solvent based, so it's safe to use on the crackle finish. I'm going to use the blue one as an antiquing medium. I'm going to apply it with a soft cloth and then wipe it off. It will stay in all the cracks, giving a very interesting outcome. Oil paints are pretty inexpensive and great to use for antiquing. They do the same job as expensive antiquing paste and you have a great selection of colors for some unique finishes. If you're enjoying and finding some value in this video, please hit that like button for me. Doing so helps my channel to grow and sends this video to more people out there. That way I can continue to bring you awesome tutorials. Thanks for doing that. Make sure you click that bell so you'll be notified anytime I upload a new video. I got a little sloppy with the blue oil paint, so I'm covering it up with a little more gesso. I don't want it to show through my rice paper. I'm using some beautiful dragonfly rice paper that I purchased from decoupagenapkins.com, as well as some scrapbook paper with verbiage on it. I'm wetting the edge of the paper so it will rip easily. It's always better to have a torn edge rather than a cut edge. The torn edges are much easier to blend. Decoupagenapkins.com has such a great selection of rice papers as well as napkins that you can purchase one at a time. Rub on transfers, molds, modeling clay, stencils, stamps, scrapbook paper, and much more over 5,600 products. They offer a 5% discount on orders over $50, 5% and free shipping on orders over $75, and 10% discount 
plus free shipping on orders over $125. They are wonderful to work with and send out their orders fast. Make sure you check them out. I'll leave you a link in my description box below. I bought these beautiful mulberry papers from Amazon. They are very sheer and have little bits and pieces of plant stems and leaves. They're so pretty. I'm going to layer this over top of the paper with the verbiage. This will give the scrapbook paper a rice paper look. And I'm tearing the edges and measuring it to the same size as my scrapbook paper. I'm wetting and tearing the edges of all the papers to fit on my pot. Send me a comment and let me know what type of project you would like to see next. Decoupage, mixed media canvases, or more mason jar decorating. Your suggestion could be my very next video. I answer every single comment I receive. I love hearing from all of you and look forward to reading all your comments. I'm using some brown ink and a Tim Holtz dauber to make the edges of the paper look old and weathered. I'm applying it in a circular motion all the way around. I decided to add about an inch of the cracked gold to the bottom of the pot as well. I just thought that it made it look a little more balanced. I'm using Mod Podge to glue the dragonfly paper down first. I'm putting the edge in the center front of the pot and then wrapping a portion of it around to the side of the pot. I'm spraying the rice paper with water to make it more pliable. The water helps the Mod Podge blend with the paper and create a strong bond. It also reduces wrinkles and bubbles. I'm brushing over it to make sure it lays flat. Then I'll do the same thing with the back of the pot. I'm wetting the scrapbook paper with some water as well and I'm overlapping it slightly over the top of the dragonfly paper. I'm gluing it with the Mod Podge and then brushing over it to make sure it's on securely. It was a little too long so I tore off part of it. Now I'm going to add my rice paper overlay on top of the scrapbook paper. I added some more Mod Podge and wet the rice paper before adding it. This one was a little long as well, so I tore off some from the back. I did the same thing with the other side of the pot. I let it dry for about an hour and then sprayed the whole thing with a gloss sealer to protect all my work. I'm going to make some really cute 3D dragonflies using Delight Clay and some cream paste. One of the dragonflies is pretty small, so the cream paste is a good choice for that one. I'll spread it in the mold and let it dry overnight. It'll be so much easier to remove from the mold. The next day, all you do is wipe off the excess cream paste around the dragonfly with an alcohol wipe and then pop it out. I'm going to add some ferns and the mold is pretty shallow on these too, so I'm going to use the cream paste again. Everything is dry, so it's time to paint. I painted the body of the dragonflies with a medium blue. After that dried, I added a beautiful iridescent color from the color shift line at Hobby Lobby. It's called Blue Flash. It's an iridescent blue and purple. It's a translucent color, which is why I added the medium blue paint under it. I'm working on some great projects for the upcoming weeks. 
I'll be doing some decoupage, more 3D air dry clay, and mason jar decorating. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of them. I got this beautiful pearlescent paint from Dollar Tree. It's beautiful and also translucent. I'm going to use it for the wings and I'm putting it right over the white clay. You'll be able to see through it and it will give a very light and airy see-through look. I'm painting all the ferns a really pretty medium green. And I'll let everything dry and then give them a coat of satin sealer. I'll let that dry for about an hour before moving on. I'm going to be antiquing everything to accent all the mold details. When antiquing, you need to have a sealer on the paint or it will absorb your antique instead of wiping off. I'm using Vintage Effect in black as my antiquing medium for the dragonflies. I'm mixing it with a little water to make it a little runny. I'm brushing it on everywhere and then wiping it off. It will stay in all the cracks and crevices, which will bring out all the details that were in the molds. I was able to temporarily glue a stir stick on the dragonfly that I made out of clay for easier handling. But the items that I made with the cream paste, I wasn't able to do that. The hot glue sticks to that cream paste for dear life. I've actually put holes in my embellishments trying to remove them. So I have to tough it out and get messy with anything made from the cream paste. On the ferns, I'm using a dark brown antiquing medium, and I'm mixing that with a little water as well. I'll do the same thing, brush on and wipe off, leaving all the beautiful details behind. Are you having any craft problems you can't figure out? Or maybe something you'd like to learn? Send me a comment. I'd love to try and help you. I'm adding a little bit of gold and white rub to the dragonflies to jazz them up a little bit. I'm adding the gold first and then layering the white over top of the gold. If you don't have rubs, you can dry brush with gold and white metallic paints. It should give you a similar look. Now, any of you that follow me know that I just can't leave things alone. I have the need to add some glitter to these dragonflies. I'm using Mod Podge to add a little bit just to the tops of the wing edges. I added a really fine white glitter, but you couldn't see it well enough, so I ended up putting some chunkier glitter on there. This is the part I enjoy the most. I love when it's time to put it all together. I'm using hot glue to add all the ferns and dragonflies. I added the two ferns to the left side on top of the paper with the verbiage. I put the dragonfly dead center. I put the large dragonfly on the front of the pot and the smaller one centered on the back. I'm using a Shore Bonder cordless glue gun. I absolutely love this glue gun. It's so nice to work without fighting a cord that's in your way all the time. I have this listed in my favorite tools section in my description box below in case you want to check it out. After I was finished gluing, I sprayed the entire pot front and back with a gloss sealer. I put together a playlist of some other tutorials you may enjoy. Click the picture on the right to be taken directly to that playlist. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe by clicking my picture in the top right corner so you don't miss any future videos.